They are going to be here tomorrow. I can't believe it. But there's a few more things that we need to do to get ready for them. And one is providing them some food. So let me show you what we are doing today to get ready for our bees. So you can see we've got our hive bodies ready. I'm going to be taking these to the bee farm tomorrow and they are going to be helping me put bees in one of them. They're gonna give me two nukes and I'm gonna bring those nukes home and put them in my other hives. But there is something that you need to do always when you get your bees. And I've been told this by everybody, including the farm that I'm getting them from, and that is feeding them. Now you're like, wait a minute, hold on. It's late spring and there's plenty of flowers outside. And why are you feeding bees? Well, when you get a hive for the first time or you get your colony for the first time and you're establishing them in a new place, they don't know what's around. They will start exploring almost immediately, but they need something to eat in the meantime. Today I'm gonna to talk about the different types of feeders that are made for hive bodies so you can feed your bees. We're gonna talk about some advantages and disadvantages of each of them, show you what we bought, and then I actually need to build something for this type of feeder to go on top of one of my hives. So we chose top feeders for our hives, and this one is plastic, and it's for a 10 frame. It has actually six places for the bees to come up from the bottom and feed without getting out of the top of the hive. So there's really no reason to smoke them in this case. And on each of these little portions that they crawl down, it's ridged so they cannot fall in and drown themselves, which is a common issue with, um, with bees and with certain types of feeders. So you wanna be careful to select ones that are gonna be safe for them to use and that will hold a decent amount of liquid. This one holds four and a half liters. And that's plenty for them if you have a new hive. Just one fill up and you should be good. Now this that I showed you earlier is also a top hive feeder and it has a cover on it so the bees can't get out. It has the same concept on the inside, an inner portion here that has a cover on it, and this is ridge so that they can climb up and down it, and they, are, they can get their footing. They're not gonna fall in and drown in the syrup that is in this one. Now, obviously, this one is much smaller. This only holds, I believe, a liter and a half. But the portion that I need to build is something like this telescoping top, but flipped upside down. So it's basically just this with a hole in the middle. And this, right here on the bottom, is gonna sit inside that hole. What that will do is give me the ability to lift the top cover off, fill up the syrup, without having contact with the bees. And from what I've learned, you do not want to disturb your bees for about 30 days after you put them in the hive. So I will get to building this extra section in just a minute, but let me show you my other top hive feeder. So this is an eight frame that I have, and we're gonna take off the telescoping cover, the inner cover, and you'll see we come to this wooden top hive feeder. Now, these have floats in them. What this piece of wood will do is float on top of the syrup, and it will prevent the bees hopefully, from falling in and drowning in the syrup. They can go and stick their tongues down through these slats and get the, uh, the syrup from the bottom. They are heavily, heavily coated on the inside, and this seems like an epoxy kind of material, a resin type of material. It's very thick, and it should hold the water just fine, but you're gonna wanna check this over time to see if it's leaking. That's the advantage, obviously, of the plastic one. Now, obviously on this one, they will be up in this area and there's nothing covering it here. So you will want to smoke them to be able to fill up that syrup for them. Now I have read several instances of people saying they don't like these because they've had bees drown and that they've switched over to things like this that really won't allow the bees to drown. Now the next type of feeder is a frame feeder and it is simply shaped like the frame, but it's a long cup and it is about one and a half times as wide as one of these frames. It fits in there well. It has a piece of wood on the top with a hole in it and some ridges on the inside so the bees can climb down and hold on 
and drink from. However, some of these frame feeders, if they have thin plastic walls, can get pushed. And what I mean by that is when the bees are building out that brood and that comb, it pushes into it and warps it, deforms it, and it doesn't work the same as it used to. So I've heard good things about them and bad things about them. It might be a quality issue. So a cheap one might do that. An expensive professional one, maybe not. So the next type of feeder is a hive entrance feeder. And basically what that is, a little piece of plastic and you screw a mason jar full of syrup into it. It sits right at the entrance of your hive and kind of tucks under the bottom um, deep box. Now the reason I didn't choose those was several different reasons. One is because that syrup is sitting outside and it's exposed to the sun. I didn't really like that. I didn't know how it would react with that syrup. Maybe it would help evaporate it quicker. I'm not sure. It's in that sealed uh, glass jar. But I didn't want it sitting out there. I didn't want it sitting out on the front for another reason too. And that is the roving animals that are around. So would they be attracted to that syrup as well? Maybe a, a possum or a raccoon or whatever it is. Could they knock it easily off the front of the hive body? Break the glass? I'm not sure, but I just didn't want it there. And another reason is it doesn't hold very much. It's just one quart mason jar that you actually don't even fill up all the way to the top. These other types of feeders hold more, so it's less disturbance for your hive. Okay, very last one before I start building the other piece to accommodate this top feeder. And that is a simple Ziploc bag that you're gonna fill up with that sugar syrup and just lay it on the top of your frames. And what you're going to do is just take a pin and poke a few holes in it, and those bees are gonna come up on top of that bag and start licking up that syrup that's just barely coming out of those holes. So a few disadvantages of that is that it's messy and it could leak everywhere. And if you want to refill it, you really can't. But it's just a cheap plastic bag, so you can use a new one if you want. Additionally, with that baggy feeder, you're going to have to have some sort of extension on the top of your deep. You can use a super with no frames in it, which would work well, because if you put that bag of syrup in here and you try to put this on the top, it's just gonna kind of float around on the syrup. The bees aren't gonna be able to get to it. You have to have some space for them to get to it. I'm excited. I found some scrap wood laying around that is the perfect size for building the new piece for the hive. And what I'm even more excited about is using our new table saw. This is the first time I've had a new table saw in 12 years. We had the old Ryobi blue color contractor saw that I bought to put the floor in our house in Houston probably, I think it was 12 years ago, and we were finally able to save up and get a new one. Let's build this thing. So this brand of round top feeder I bought is two and a half inches in height. So I'm gonna go three inches for the sides. Everything's cut, it's pretty simple. Now I'm gonna put it together. Next thing we're gonna do is drill a hole right in the center of our bottom right here. And that's to accommodate this portion of the feeder right here, which actually sticks out below the bottom of the feeder and that prevents it from sliding around. Done. So like with the other feeders, this one just sits on top like this. When you wanna feed, you take off the top telescoping cover, remove this cover, fill it up, put it back on and you're all set. Well, there we go. I'm just gonna give a quick coat of paint to this one right here that I just made and we are ready for our bees. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna take you with me as I pick up my bees this week. I'm gonna give a shout out to the bee farm and try and get the owner to give a few words on camera. They've been great so far and you'll have to watch the next video to see which farm it is. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which is our initial setup of our hives and why we chose what we chose. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.